Okay. Excuse me for a sec. Okay. So, back to terminology. Um, Penny's with me today. Um, we're still in um, mood disorders, cyclic, the cyclic mood disorders. The last one that I'm going to talk about is called cyclothymia or cyclic, cyclothymic mood disorder. Um, I just recently heard it, uh, read it referred to as bipolar 3 uh, disorder. That was uh, just yesterday actually. I'd never heard it referred to it as that before. To be honest, I don't know a whole lot about the disorder at all. I've never met anybody with it. I don't hear a lot of people talk about it. And um, any book, and I've read a lot of books on bipolar disorder, they always have this tiny little blurb, you know, that it's, you know, but basically, um, from what I gather from all the little tidbits, the small amount of information is that a person, the person is experiencing mood, a mood disorder, but just not to the severity of being diagnosed as um, uh, bipolar one disorder or bipolar two disorder. Um, I also have heard it described as being sort of an undercurrent, a sort of constant ebb and flow of low-grade mania, hypomania and depression. Um, I did um, read that irritability is a pretty common feature, symptom, with the cyclothymia. Um, and you know, I just lied to you and said that that was the only category for the cyclic mood disorders. There's one more. Bipolar disorder, not otherwise specified. Bipolar disorder, NOS. Nobody's mood disorder fits neatly into a category. Some people, it's just really cut and dry and you just look at their um, history and um, and it's just like, oh yeah, they get that right in there, right in that category, but that's pretty rare. And um, some people just don't uh, fit any of the other categories, and that's just a catch-all term. Um, because for insurance purposes and things like that, you have to have a label. You have to have a diagnosis. Um, mood dis just saying mood disorder doesn't cut it. Okay, so that's that. Um, a term associated with mood disorders that I want to mention here is called the kindling effect. The kindling as in, um, you know, little twigs and stuff that you start a fire, big fire, comes a big fire out of it. Uh, this is a theory, it's a theory that um, that when a mood disorder goes untreated or undertreated, the frequency and the severity of the episodes increase. Um, sort of an, an exacerbation of each episode that's experienced. So it is that important to stage your disorder remain treated and you not let your episodes get out of control. Because also, with it, the more out of control it is, the longer it's been untreated, the harder it is for the medication to work. Um, let's see. I'm going to talk about just terms of psychosis right now. Um, I'll get into greater detail <laughs> with my experiences with that and experiences other people have had, but these are just terms. Um, psychosis can be experienced during a manic, hypomanic, or 
a depressive episode either. And everybody seems, you know, not everybody, but most people associated with schizophrenia and things like that, but even people with um, unipolar depression can have some psychotic psychosis, psychotic um, symptoms when they're really, really depressed and low and uh, symptoms are pretty severe. The first kind of psycho psychosis symptom I'm going to um, define is a delusion. And that is just basically intensely believing something that is not true or something that did not happen. Um, an example from me is that I believed I had memories, new memories from the past of these outrageous things and they never happened. There was proof that they never happened because as it turned out I was challenged in that I've never been to San Diego <laughs> and we didn't live in that state when this or that happened. But I was certain that a friend had committed suicide right in front of me. A memory. It was a delusion. Um, let's see. The next kind is a hallucination and that is hearing seeing, smelling, feeling, just all this, any sense of something that doesn't exist, that's not real. Hearing voices, hearing sounds that aren't there, um, feeling bugs under your skin or things like that is a kind of hallucination. Um, seeing things that aren't there seeing birds, seeing bugs, um, or even seeing people, seeing ghosts, seeing uh, anything that is not there. I'm not saying that ghosts exist, I'm just saying that it could be part of a hallucination, psychotic uh, episode um, or symptoms. Um, let's see. Another one that's kind of a delusion is paranoia, and that is thinking that um, people are out to harm you or are trying to influence you in a way to cause you harm. People are doing things behind your back, like hiding things of yours, um, that people are talking about you. Um, I had the paranoia one where I could... There was imp it was impossible for me to be able to hear a conversation, but I could have swore these people were talking about me, or and uh, and back to the auditory the hallucinations. I heard radios that where a radio wasn't on. I'd go into the room, and the radio wouldn't be on. Um, another thing in psychotic episode or psychosis, psychotic symptoms, is uh, disorganized thoughts. And I just describe that as basically like all your thoughts are a puzzle and instead of it being neatly put together, they're all scattered and you can't get the pieces together and it's just random thoughts. And it doesn't make any sense because you can't put them in any organized order. There's, and so when you talk, there's no logical stream of thought. And I think that's it. All right. Uh, psychosis. It can be quite obvious, people talking to themselves, walking down the street, or it can be just happening in somebody's head and you have no idea they're totally off. And that's why it can be dangerous, but I'll get more into that later.